channel if you're new here welcome so today I'm actually going to be doing a part two to my last video and I explained it a little bit before but I'm going to go into a little bit more depth now I will also be leaving the song linked down below so you guys can just check it out because it literally just explains the entire story and it's beautiful so basically Shmuel is a fictional character within a story of a musical called the last five years now I was personally referencing the movie version of the musical a little bit this is featuring Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan just because I really love the way Jeremy Jordan painted Shmuel's character. It gave him a lot of life and personality and a little bit more of a physical atmosphere even though you can't see his character at all. It's all just imaginary. So I was referencing that and how Jeremy Jordan was explaining Shmuel. So basically Jeremy Jordan is using a story to convince his wife that it's not the end of the road, that she will get a job and she will be able to pursue her dreams. It just takes time. So with that, he's an author, so he paints magnificent stories. So he kind of concocts his own little story to help her out in this situation. He creates the character Shmuel, who's a tailor in a small town. He's very old. He's been doing this his whole life. He's basically okay with his routine. And so, of course, a little bit of magic happens and the clock off the wall comes to life and basically is offering him the opportunity to turn back time to whenever he wants so he can continue to live his life and be happier. And Shmuel is just like, no, oh, I'm in the Oh man, I'm, I'm and so he's sewing a dress and as he's sewing the dress the clock is slowly convincing him and bringing back all of these memories from when he was happy and so all of a sudden Shmuel decides that he is going to accept the clock's invitation and he goes back in time and the dress that he was sewing was the dress that he gave his wife the night before they got married and so I actually thought that it was such a sweet story which is why the clock in the last video is actually slightly inspired by how I would imagine his true love to be but if you don't want to have a specific character behind it and you just want to be an old man I'm basically going to be showing you a tutorial how you can transform yourself into a little old geezer now I personally did make this a little bit more theatrical so I made things pop a little bit more and not lean more towards the realistic side. If you wanted to go realistic, I would recommend rubber mask grease paints just so it would kind of meld into the skin and it wouldn't necessarily look painted on. But because what I'm referencing is a musical, I did kind of lean a little bit more towards stage makeup. So anyways, with all that rambling done, if you guys are interested in seeing how you can achieve the shmuel makeup, or if you prefer an old man makeup, then just keep watching. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to be applying some petroleum jelly all over the life cast so we can easily remove the prosthetics later on. And just a quick disclaimer, prosthetics aren't really required for this look, but I just thought it'd be a fun added touch, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. Next, I'm going to be taking some of my liquid latex and using a sponge, I'm going to be lightly applying a thin layer onto the nose and chin area so we can have some blending edges that aren't going to be too thick. And I just wait for it to dry before I go ahead and add a few more layers. I believe I did about three to four just so that you can still remove the prosthetic from your life cast, but so that it is thin enough that you can easily blend the edges once it is applied to your face. Next, I'm going to be making some latex paste by mixing some liquid latex with some baking flour. And then I'm going to be applying a little bit with a piece of cotton onto the bridge of my nose, just so we can start to build a solid foundation and shape. So I'm just going to be flattening that out before applying more of the paste around the latex nose so we can start to actually build a prosthetic. You definitely want to try to smooth this out as much as possible. The problem with this technique is that you aren't going to have it completely smooth and it is going to look more fake than an actual molded sculpted prosthetic wood, which I'm actually going to be trying to create in the future so we can have more realistic looking prosthetic pieces. Something I personally highly recommend is to dip your finger in some liquid latex to help smooth out the edges and make the prosthetic look as smooth as you can possibly get it. Once you have fully sculpted your prosthetic and allowed it to dry overnight, you're going to be taking some baby powder and applying this all over the prosthetic and the surrounding area, and then you're going to be slowly lifting it using your fingers. Now, because we have very thin edges, you want to be as careful as possible. It might rip in a few areas, but just try not to let it rip anywhere that you're going to be blending it on your face. And you want to go ahead and apply some baby powder to the under edges of the prosthetic as well, so it's going to be easier to remove and it's not going to get all stuck on each other. Next, we're going to be moving on to applying our bald cap. I'm just going to be taking this large bald cap that I have that is actually too big, but it's the only one that I had unless I decided to make one, which I didn't have the time to do. And you're just going to go ahead and slide that right onto your head. 
Next, I'm going to be taking some of my Ben Nye Spear Gum on a Q-tip and just going ahead and applying that onto the forehead to let that go ahead and adhere and moving on to cutting out the ear holes. Now this can be a little tricky if you want it to look perfect, which I try my best. And so you're actually going to be cutting a little crescent moon shape on the tip of your ear before cutting out the rest of the ear hole. It is actually kind of difficult. If you want to get a perfectly cut out ear hole, I would actually recommend looking up a tutorial on YouTube because it can be very intricate if needed and I didn't get the correct shot to kind of showcase it to you guys as best as possible. Once both sides are adhered to the face, you're then going to be taking the rest of the bald cap in the back with your hair into a ponytail and just tying that back. In most movies, they actually have to do this and try to hide it with a costume or they remove it with CGI. In few cases, I've seen people try and do pin curls to get all of their hair up in there, but I personally find that that still makes the bald cap a little too bumpy. I want this to be as flat and realistic as possible. So in most movies, they actually do kind of just try to hide it with the costume. Unless you have short enough hair or you literally don't have any hair on your head, in that case, you can literally just glue it in the back as well. Next, we want to blend this into our forehead. So I'm going to be mixing some Prosade and some Cabasil so we can make Bondo. And then I'm going to be taking my spatula and lightly applying it to create a bridge or a ramp from the forehead to the bald cap. You don't want to have too much on top of the bald cap because then it is going to look lumpy. So you just try to want to work with thin layers and slowly build it up. You definitely want the edges to be thin so that this really does just blend into your forehead. You might have to do a few layers of this. You just want to make sure to let this dry before before you do so. Next, I'm going to be going back into my Ben Nye Spirit Gum and applying a little bit onto the chin and also the prosthetic as well before laying the prosthetic down onto my chin and letting that dry. And I'm going to be doing the exact same thing with the nose, making sure to have a layer on my nose and on the prosthetic before gluing it to my face. And just like with the bald cap, if you have any edges that seem to be a little thicker that you weren't able to thin out as nicely, you want to go ahead and make some Bondo and apply that to the edges as well. Once that is done, we're just going to be taking some Johnson's baby powder and set the entire prosthetic and bald cap area. Moving on, we're going to be taking some liquid latex on our sponge and just applying this all over the bald cap. When you purchase bald caps, they are typically extremely smooth. However, when I personally make them, they seem to have more texture, which I personally like. I feel like it looks a little bit more realistic to have a few lumps on your head because it looks more like skin texture. So I just like to go ahead and apply a few layers of this onto the bald cap just to try and add a little bit more of that skin pore-like texture. And once again, you just want to make sure to set that with some baby powder before we move on to our foundation. I'm going to be taking my Too Faced Born This Way foundation and I'm just going to actually take a large fluffy brush that shouldn't be used for foundation, but it was the only clean brush I had. And I'm just going to be applying my foundation with this and you definitely want to make sure to blend that down your neck and also up onto your bald cap as well. You don't have to cover your entire bald cap if you are just doing like a photo shoot or something like that. But if you are going out, you want to definitely have someone help you go into the back of the bald cap as well. Once again, feel free to grab some Johnson's baby powder and set your entire egg head and face. And of course, I had started to create some wrinkles without showing you guys what I was doing, so I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to be taking my Graftobian Pro Paint and Fuzzy Bear Brown and White Swan, mixing them together so I can get a darker shade for my face. I'm going to be raising my eyebrows to create the forehead wrinkles, squinting my eyes close together so I can create the indentions, and also applying some above the eyebrows as well. And I'm also going to be applying some under eye bags as well. So for that, I'm going to be applying the brown and white body paint right under the eyes where your natural bags are. With doing wrinkles, you always want to apply the wrinkles where you would naturally have wrinkles. You don't want to start to create new ones because that is going to make it look unrealistic whenever you move your face. I'm going to be applying some under my nose and also puckering up my lips together so we can get some nice lip wrinkles as well. For the crow's feet, I just decided to lightly squint my eyes so I could see where I naturally have them before applying paint right over that and also applying some on the tip of my nose and also creating a nice chin indention as well. Going into my Morphe James Charles palette, I'm going to be taking this reddish brown and just applying that right around the perimeter of my head so we can start to add some natural contour to our face so that there's a little bit more definition to work with before going back in and taking this camel color and the brown and we're going to be applying that into the eye socket area without applying it to the outer part of our brow bone. This is definitely going to give a sunken eye effect and feel free to bring that down to your bags as well. 
I'm also going to be taking this brown color from the palette and I'm going to be lightly shading all of the wrinkles that we have before we move on to highlighting them. But this is just going to really help define them a little bit more and make them look more realistic. And feel free to blend them out using your finger because you don't want this to look like it is literally just painted on. You want it to look realistic. Now something that really helped was to create jowls, so I just went ahead and stuck my tongue in the lower corners of my mouth and just kind of outlined that with the eyeshadow and also started to contour my nose. And once again, I had started highlighting my face without showing you guys what I was doing. So basically, I'm taking my Graftopia and Pro Paint and White Swan and lightly applying that to all of the areas that we now want to highlight to make the wrinkles look more realistic. So you're mostly just going to be applying this to either the upper side or the underside of each wrinkle to help give it a more realistic touch. Now, in case any of you were concerned, I am using body paint because I do want this to look a little bit more like stage makeup and more theatrical. But if you do want this to air more on the realistic side, I would recommend using rubber mask grease paints instead. I'm also going to be going back into the dark brown eyeshadow and applying that to the inner corner of the eye just so we can have some more dimension before going back into the dark brown eyeshadow and also just applying that to our upper lash line. I'm also going to be going into the red eyeshadow in the palette and applying that to the upper lash line as well just so we can have a little bit more red watery eye irritation before going back into the dark camel color and applying that into the inner socket as well. I'm also going to be taking the white eyeshadow and just applying that up onto the outer corner of the brow bone to help pronounce that a little bit more. I'm also going to be taking my NYX lip liner in red tape and applying that to my lower waterline so we can add a little bit more irritation there as well. I'm then going to be going back into my Graftopian Pro Paint in White Swan, and we're just going to be sweeping that through our eyebrows so we can definitely whiten that out a little bit since we are going to be applying facial hair and some hair around our head, but we want this to blend into that. I'm also going to be going into this black eyeshadow and the dark brown eyeshadow, mixing them together and to help contour the rest of our face because I felt like I was kind of starting to look a little blank. And so I definitely wanted to add a little bit more dimension and you definitely want to add that onto your head as well because that is still part of your face that is still going to have natural contours. I'm then going to be taking my Skin Illustrator Flesh Palette, taking Vein Tone, and I'm going to be creating some little veins on my cheeks and also bringing that up onto my temples and forehead as well. This is an alcohol activated palette, so this is going to make it look like it is actually underneath your skin instead of a body paint, which is going to look like it is painted on top of your skin. Going back into my flesh palette, I'm going to be taking Rosa Jester on a chip brush and I'm just going to try and make that as sheer as possible by adding a little bit more 99% alcohol and splattering that on my face and bringing it up to my head as well. I'm also going to be taking some of my Cedar Brown and Midnight Brown and splattering that all over my face and head as well. This is really going to break up the foundation and add more texture and sunspots to my skin before we go in to our Graftopian Pro Paint and Fuzzy Bear Brown and really create a, the bigger sunspots by taking a bunch of paint and diffusing it with some water with our fingers. Next, I'm going to be going back into my Ben Nye Spirit Gum and applying that around my ear before taking some pantyhose and stippling that on top to help mattify it and make it tacky. For the fake hair, I'm taking my crepe wool in dark gray and light gray, mixing them together and just applying that right on top. Feel free to cut this as you wish to make it the length you want. And honestly, I kind of liked how it looked a little crazy. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. I FaceTimed my friends while I was doing this because this really helps pull the look together. I'm just going to be doing this on the other side of my head as well and even applying a little goatee onto my chin. I'm going to be going back into my black eyeshadow and just lightly sweeping that through my eyebrows to help make them look a little bit more gray as opposed to white before going into my Graftopian Pro Paint and Fuzzy Bear Brown, puckering up my lips and just applying that with my finger before going in with my Graftopian Pro Paint and White Swan and doing that right on top as well. And this is going to give you the perfect chapped lips. And that is the completed look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel so you can see more of my videos. I'll be leaving a link to my 12 days of SFX Miss playlist down below so you guys can easily check them out. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!